Christmas is right around the corner and parents are looking around for the next viral toy for their kids. Okay people, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Santa's coming down. Santa! We are so finally Christmas done Christmas our shopping. For our annual What We Bought Our Kids for Christmas video. But this holiday season, one popular toy has the public completely divided. <laughs> This is definitely not for children. Christmas is ruined. The backlash was so bad, Walmart has removed the toy from their website. And now legal action may be taken. What is going on with this children's toy? What's the dark secret behind the toy's innocent smile? We'll also get a blast from the past from other unbelievable toys. One innocent looking doll breaches your child's privacy using features like connecting to the internet and recording them. I promise not to tell anyone. It's just between you and me because we are friends. Another children's toy from a popular TV show contained asbestos, and many other toys that received a lot of backlash. Let's get into the story. Each Christmas season is marked by a toy that kids can't get enough of. In 1952, a Mr. Potato Head kit, the first toy advertised on TV in the United States, sold over a million units in its first year. And it didn't even come with a potato. In 1996, the craze around Tickle Me Elmo led to stampedes, arrests, and multiple injuries. This year, one of the hottest toys is going viral across the internet. It's a dancing cactus that sings a cute song, usually in English, Spanish, or Polish, and videos of kids and adults reacting to it have gained millions of views on platforms like TikTok. But unlike the viral toys of Christmas past, this one in particular has a dark secret. On November 23rd, CTV News Toronto reported on a Polish grandmother living in Ontario who found something strange about the cactus toy, which she bought for her young granddaughter. Ania Tanner believes she bought an educational toy from Walmart's website, but when she listened to the Polish song it was singing, she was shocked to hear lyrics about use and depression. I was in shock. I thought, what is this, some kind of joke? The song in question is by Polish rapper Sipis, and the song's title translates to Where's the White Eel? According to Urban Dictionary, white eel can refer to a line of The English translation of the lyrics reveal the dark nature of the song. Immediately, the song references drug use. The only thing in my head is five grams of fly away alone to the edge of oblivion. It then discusses I have thoughts in my head, when will all this end? Other lyrics reflect on depression. My head's empty like a street in front of your dorm. I melt like a bar, which is lying on the counter. Going down is when you don't pull. Brother, my face is getting f***ed up. My head's a brothel, just like on TV. I am not surprised by such a state. Lack of goods in my mind get high. Whenever I'll make it or not, descending is so damn exhausting. As if the locusts bite off your c There's also a heavy emphasis on addiction. Oh f I think I'm gonna die if I don't snort something soon. I want to touch the stars so badly, but none of this since I'm on a descent. I think death is breaking me down. I won't swallow anything. I have chills. How f much longer this condition will last? I dreamed of a van of c and gram of hair just for taste. According to a representative, Sipis had no idea the song was being used in a children's toy, and the representative said Sipis is disgusted with its use. Some social media comments made fun of the toy and thought the situation was funny. Bought my daughter a dancing cactus toy that appears to be singing and dancing to a Polish song about addiction? I mean, it's pretty great, no regrets. And this Polish song is very catchy. My mom is humming it now. All I want for Christmas is this, a toy cactus that raps in Polish about as for buyers, the response is more mixed. According to Amazon reviews, some buyers are happy with the toy, despite the lyrics. So funny and cute. I'm sorry, but the people saying that it's inappropriate are being silly. Your infant child thinks it's funny. Ours broke and we are express mailing another one. This is a great gag gift. The infamous cactus may not be family friendly, but it's a riot for immature adults but others weren't pleased with mature subject matter in a toy targeted at kids. This is definitely not for children. The song this cactus sings is the Polish cow song. When translated to English, this song sings about hair and other disgusting things. That's a depressing song about pain and death. Don't buy it. It's a trash. 
When CTV News reached out to Walmart, a spokesperson said, These items are sold by a third-party seller on our Marketplace website. We are removing the items while we look into this complaint further. But this isn't the first time this toy has attracted the wrong kind of attention. In July 2021, Taiwan News published a very similar story to the CTV News piece from December. A Polish mother living in Taichung saw the cactus toy at Carrefour, a French corporation with a large presence in Taiwan. At the store, the mother saw the cactus toy dancing and singing to the Polish song, and she recognized the explicit lyrics. She told a friend about the toy, who then reached out to Taiwan News. The mother also posted a video of the toy to a Polish online forum. A spokesperson for Carrefour's Taiwan headquarters told Newsweek the company wasn't aware of any issues surrounding the toy, but the toy would be pulled if it was found to be inappropriate. As for Cypus, his representative told Warsaw Base, The First News, We knew nothing about this. It is a complete surprise for us. If we manage to take any legal steps, they will draw the consequences related to the unlawful use of the work by Cypus. Certainly the toy producer would not be allowed to use the song for this purpose. Cypus also addressed the controversy on his social media. He made an Instagram post about the toy and captioned it, a media scandal since the morning. But how did the cactus toy spread online in the first place? It's impossible to track how this specific toy gained popularity, but we can see how similar products get their cult status. Let's enter the world of dropshipping. Dropshippers are e-commerce entrepreneurs who sell items online by acting as middlemen between the manufacturers and the buyers. Dropshippers will find a product that's either already trending online or has the potential to trend online, then contact a supplier on a site like AliExpress or Alibaba. They then act as a middleman, selling the product on a website directly to the consumer. From there, dropshippers promote the products through social media, Facebook ads, TikTok videos, and ads below viral tweets. Take the infamous chonky seal pillow that went viral in December 2019. The original toy was a plush version of Yuki, a popular ring seal from a Japanese aquarium. The aquarium partnered with Felissimo, a Japanese retailer, to release the pillow in September 2019. Almost immediately, dropshippers saw the plush and began selling their own bootlegged versions at a fraction of the original's price. But with multiple sellers, the knockoffs varied in size and quality. Some smelled like gasoline, others were much smaller than advertised. And dropshippers can fudge the truth about the specific version of the product they sell and even their brand itself, making it difficult to know if you're buying a better quality bootleg. For for example, this dropshipper admitted to faking the number of products sold on one of his sites to build trust with buyers. So if we go through the website, you can see on the shipping bar, I'll put 12,678 orders sold worldwide. Now I've done that to build trust with people so they know that it's legit. Obviously, I've not sold that many. So with multiple dropshippers advertising their version of the same product all over social media at the same time, it's easy to see how a product can quickly go viral, like with the cactus toy. But the cactus toy isn't the only toy to have been called in question for being unsafe or inappropriate for kids. In November 2021, grocery chain Aldi reminded parents of an active product recall on a Jack and Jill wooden block set. The toy was pulled from the shelves over a year ago after an Australian consumer watchdog group found the small magnets on the back of the blocks to be choking hazards. However, Aldi released a statement about the recall when very few units were returned to the store. Aldi takes product safety seriously, and due to the low number of returns, we wish to remind customers of an active recall of the Jack and Jill wooden block sets, farm, jungle, and ocean. If you have not already, customers should immediately stop use and return the product to your nearest Aldi store for a full refund. We apologize for any inconvenience. In 2002, Mattel released a new version of a character in the Barbie cinematic universe, one of her best friends, Midge. This doll was part of a collection called the Happy Family Line, which included Midge, her husband Alan, and their son Ryan. The problem? The Midge doll was pregnant with a daughter named Nikki, and the doll came with a pop-off belly for kids to remove the belly when the baby was born. I can pull out her belly really quick, see? And you can also put the baby inside. But parents were not happy with the idea of their kids playing with a pregnant doll. In fact, it was pulled from Walmart shelves after customer complaints. This was how Mattel promoted the line on their website at the time, according to CBS News. The Happy Family dolls are designed to satisfy the desire for nurturing play by girls age 5 to 8 and can be a wonderful prop for parents to use with their children to role-play family situations, especially in families anticipating the arrival of a new sibling. 
but one shopper outside of a Philadelphia toy store said, it's a bad idea. It promotes teenage pregnancy. What would an eight-year-old or 12-year-old get out of that doll baby? My friend Kayla, an interactive doll that can have conversations with players through a smartphone app, came under fire for potentially breaching children's privacy. Tell us something about yourself. My name is Kayla. I'm seven years old, and my favorite color is pink. I promise not to tell anyone. It's just between you and me because we are friends. According to CNN, the Kayla doll also has a mobile phone app that asks children to provide personal information, like their name and their parents' name, their favorite TV show, their favorite meal, where they go to school, their favorite toy, and where they live. I know that your mom's name is Allison. The doll is connected to the internet. When a person asks the toy a question, the audio is recorded and converted to text, so the doll can get answers from Google and Wikipedia. It's a baby kangaroo called a jelly. Wow, how does she know that? Once you download the app, you'll see a screen like this. This little person icon, that is where you put in answers to various questions as to uh, what's your child's name? Uh, what's their favorite food? These audio recordings are also uploaded to Nuance, a voice technology. Consumer advocacy groups were concerned about Nuance using the recordings to improve products it sells to the government, military, and law enforcement agencies. However, Nuance's Vice President of Corporate Marketing and Communications wrote in a blog post that Nuance didn't sell or collect the voice data for advertising or marketing. Toys based on films and TV shows also have faced controversy. Take Star Wars. When The Force Awakens was released, one of the tie-in toys, a set of dive toys for pool play, immediately raised eyebrows. Based on this customer photo, the toys seem questionable. They were all plastic and weighted to get to the bottom of the pool, and now fans of Star Wars can take the fun underwater. A customer shared an image of the set to Target's Facebook page, and the company responded, We apologize for your disappointment. Occasionally, we carry merchandise that some guests may find objectionable, as was your experience. We never want to offend anyone and have shared this with our merchandise team for review. But the most famous example of a Star Wars toy gone bad is the near-mythical rocket-firing Boba Fett action figure. While the toy never actually hit the market, the story behind the action figure is legendary in the toy collecting and Star Wars worlds. This is the rarest, most significant Star Wars prototype in the world. This is a one-of-a-kind rocket-firing Bubba Fett and it is something I love more than anything. In 1979, the action figure was offered as part of a mail-in rebate program. The manufacturer, Kenner Toys, designed the toy with the fireable rocket. But after concerns over the rocket being a choking hazard, Kenner released a non-fireable rocket version instead. I know what it is, but I have no idea how much it's worth. Do you have the missile? Yes, I it believe should it's come in with there. A missile. Wow. What you have is an unproduced action figure. Today, a few of the prototypes that weren't destroyed are worth thousands of dollars. Most recently, one prototype sold for $165,200 in June 2021. Shows and films with more mature subject matter, like Breaking Bad and Django Unchained, have released tie-in toys, even though their target audiences aren't exactly children. In 2014, a Florida mother started a petition urging Toys R Us to pull a set of Breaking Bad toys from their shelves. The show centers on the story of a high school chemistry teacher who becomes a kingpin in order to make ends meet. While the show may be compelling viewing for adults, its violent content and celebration of the trade make this collection unsuitable to be sold alongside Barbie dolls and Disney characters. Parents and grandparents around the world shop at Toys R Us, online and in stores, with their children and should not be forced to explain why a certain toy comes with a bag of highly dangerous and illegal or why someone who sells those deserves to be made into an action figure. Later, Toys R Us removed the toys from stores and released a statement to Fox News. Let's just say the action figures have taken an indefinite sabbatical. Brian Cranston, the star of Breaking Bad, tweeted, Florida mom petitions against Toys R Us over Breaking Bad action figures. I'm so mad, I'm burning my Florida mom action figure in protest. With the Django Unchained dolls, advocacy groups criticized the Weinstein Company for releasing the toys, with some groups referring to them as slave dolls. I mean, this might be too far, but if somebody wanted it, I guess they want it. The Weinstein Company quickly pulled the toys from the shelves and halted production on the rest of the line. Finally, some toys have been recalled for the most unexpected reasons. In 2007, a toy fingerprint kit based on the hit TV show CSI was pulled from shelves just before Christmas. Kids who wanted to play CSI using a kit to dust for fingerprints 
were blowing away excess powder in the process. The Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization found asbestos in some samples of the kit's fingerprint dust about three weeks before the announcement. In April 2008, a California asbestos awareness group sued CBS, the toy manufacturer, and several retailers who sold the toys for selling the fingerprint kits. According to the lawsuit, the fingerprint powder contained substantial quantities of tremolite asbestos. That the kit contains enough asbestos to trigger cancer later in life, according to the nonprofit Environmental Working Group. So we can see, toy recalls are more common than you may think, and they can happen for a wide variety of reasons. When it comes to more aggressive toys, like the Breaking Bad and Django Unchained dolls, parents may think the solution is to not have aggressive toys at all, but that may not be effective. Play therapy is a type of therapy that therapists use to help children process stressful or traumatic events. According to Tomas Casado Frankel, a licensed marriage and family therapist based in Brooklyn, play therapy offers insight into a child's emotional world. When children are playing with the toys in the therapist's office, they often use the toys to act out feelings they can't otherwise express, like anxiety, helplessness, and pain. Casado Frankel explains the benefits of play therapy in his young clients. Play therapy helps children work through difficult emotions. It helps them feel heard and seen. And for children such as I've described, it often manifests in improved behavior at school or reduction of overwhelming anxiety. Working through the threads of the underlying feelings in play therapy can be deeply reparative. But positive benefits don't always require peaceful toys. Play therapist Jen Taylor says the use of aggressive toys is vital for kids. In this context, aggressive toys refer to anything a child can use to release pent-up frustration or anger. Aggressive toys can have several benefits, expressing anger, relieving physical tension, learning boundaries. While the Breaking Bad or Django Unchained dolls may not be the best options for young kids, we can see that more aggressive toys in general can have positive benefits for kids. But what about the toys that parents may find inappropriate, like Pregnant Midge or the cactus toy at the beginning of the story? With Pregnant Midge, it's up to the parents to decide if that doll is a good fit for their child. Some children may view the doll as a fun reflection of something they want in the distant future, while other children could want to emulate Midge in the present. As for the cactus toy, it's likely children don't understand what the toy is singing about unless the child speaks Polish. If you're concerned about your young child learning about substances, Kids Health has some tips. Take advantage of teachable moments now. If you see a character in a movie or on TV with, with a cigarette, talk about smoking and what it does to a person's body. This can lead to a talk about other and how they can harm. Keep your tone calm and use terms that your child can understand. Explain that dangerous and can cause lots of problems in the body. Teach kids early on how to say no if someone offers them something they know is dangerous. But some toys don't have an indicator on whether they're safe or appropriate, like the CSI fingerprint kit. So what can parents do in that situation? One of the best things to do is check your toys for active recalls. There are several websites that track recalls, or you can do a quick Google search on any toy you already have or are thinking of buying. It's especially important to check older toys, as they could have substances that were previously common but later found to be dangerous, like asbestos. Parents can also make sure they're buying toys that are age-appropriate. There are several guides online that can help you select toys for any age group. One thing to learn from this situation is the importance of making sure your toy is appropriate for your child. Even if it seems fun, it may not line up with the values you're teaching your child. That being said, some of the pulled toys mentioned in this video that aren't physically dangerous can be fun for older children or even adults. As caregivers, it's important to set boundaries for your children. After all, you know what's best for your kids. What do you think about this story? Are you thinking of getting your own cactus toy? Let me know in the comments below.